Hello, this is Dr. Michael Shear with the Learn Locator, a free resource on how to treatment plan, utilize, and maintain locator and locator RTX attachments for overdentures. This clinical demonstration video is to describe the clinical technique to uncover a dental implant or to remove the healing abutment and to place four locator RTX abutments. I'm using a standard 0.050 inch hex driver to carefully remove the healing abutments on top of each of the implants. While no local anesthetic was used, a small amount of topical was placed. A periodontal probe is utilized to measure the distance from the top of the implant to the top of the tissue, known as the tissue cuff height. Additionally, I rinse with chlorhexidine. The locator RTX abutment is placed using the same 0.050 inch hex driver. Taking carefully to the mouth, starting by gently screwing the top portion of the screw inside of the implant until the threads begin to grab. Using finger pressure, ensuring that the abutment is snug tight. The next series of abutments was also easily removed using the 0.050 inch hex driver. The patient had four implants placed. The anterior two were exposed just during the healing process. Additionally, taking a periodontal instrument and irrigation and placing the locator RTX abutment that corresponds with the soft tissue height measured with the periodontal probe. The abutments were finger tightened until completely adapted to the implants. For the posterior implants, the tissue was covering the implants and necessitated an uncovery procedure. Local anesthetic was applied to aid in this process so that way the patient were comfortable. Crestal incisions were performed utilizing a 12-blade instrument. A hand instrument is best utilized to expose the top of the implant beginning at the crest, finding the metal portion of the implant. And in this case, I'm using the back end of a dental curette. Using the curette carefully will ensure that you don't tear the soft tissue that surrounds the dental implant. While not always possible, preserving the keratinized tissue around an implant is optimal. After carefully teasing the healing abutment apart, it is removed in two pieces. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to remove a healing abutment that has been buried underneath the soft tissue, like is shown here. The implant tissue height is measured using a periodontal instrument, contacting the top of the implant and measuring the height to the top of the soft tissue. So for example, if I measured a three millimeter tissue height here, I place a three millimeter locator RTX abutment. Chlorhexidine irrigation was applied and the locator RTX abutment was placed using the same 0.050 inch hex driver. As I use my fingers to tighten down the implant, you'll notice how snug my fingers get when I tighten the abutment down. Be careful here because I'm using a platform switched implant and know that soft tissue has not fallen over the top platform of the implant. If you use a non-platform switched implant, be careful because you might have to push some tissue out of the way while you seat the abutment. And continuing on to our final implant, I'm also removing the healing abutment and using my tissue curette to carefully tease the tissue away from the top of the implant. Followed by periodontal tissue height measurement and chlorhexidine irrigation, I place the locator RTX abutment that corresponds to my soft tissue height measurement or tissue cuff. Notice that in all of the abutments, I am only using finger pressure to tighten the abutment to ensure that they are completely seated on top of each of the implants. It is important to verify complete seating of each of the abutments with a radiograph prior to torquing. While you can use standard periapical radiography, this can sometimes be challenging in dentalist patients. I prefer to use panoramic radiographs for simplicity. After verifying with the radiograph complete seating of the abutments on top of the implants, I'm using a torque driver to torque each one of the locator RTX abutments to 30 newton centimeters using a spring-loaded torque indicating wrench. Because a moderate amount of alveoplasty is often performed during implant surgical procedures, I like to do a laboratory realign of the denture after locator RTX abutments are placed. I find this results in greater control rather than a clinical hard realign. If, however, you prefer to perform a chair-side hard realign, you may do so. The blockout spacers are applied to the top of each of the locator RTX abutments, similar to how you place them on top of a standard locator abutment. 
The denture attachment housings are placed immediately on top of the locator RTX abutment, compressing the blockout spacers slightly below the housing. One thing that really, really helps me during this procedure is I very carefully take that blockout spacer and lightly apply it to the top of the locator RTX abutment. And taking the denture attachment housing on top of the abutment, starting at a 45 degree angle and pushing in a diagonal fashion until it seats completely on top of each of the abutments. You'll notice here also that I'm being very careful and placing a throat pack behind the implants to ensure that the loose parts don't go missing. After all of the housings have been placed, I take the patient's existing complete denture, place it back onto the edentulous ridge to ensure that I have no contact of the housings. If you are unsure, the green material around the edge of the denture is a thermoplastic wax material for border molding. Chairside PVS impression material the blue monophase is my preference, is used to wash the inside of the complete denture. I inject it into the intaglio surface of the complete denture, seating it onto the edentulous ridge, and performing a closed bite reline impression by having the patient bite into their normal closure and capturing all the proper border molding procedures. While working with chairside PVS impression material, you have one minute of working time and two and a half minutes of setting time. After the material has completely set, it is carefully removed from the mouth. Notice it can be a little bit tricky because the PVS wraps around the locator RTX attachment housings. Notice how nice the chairside PVS impression material captures the soft tissue and the locator RTX housings. The impression is sent to the laboratory for a hard reline. This video demonstration has illustrated a clinical technique to remove healing abutments, place locator RTX abutments, and perform a laboratory reline procedure. Thank you for tuning in. This is Dr. Michael Shear with Learn Locator.